Thank you for attending my quarterly credit seminar. You can reach out directly to your Equity Resources Loan Officer with any questions you may have or email info at callequity.com. At Equity Resources, our goal has always been to improve the lives of family. We feel every home buyer should get the absolute best program available to them. I heard once that most people spend more time planning a week's vacation than they do preparing their finances to buy a home. If your goal is to buy a home this summer, we should start the process now, which gives us time to review credit, give suggestions, and offer the best program for you. So let's dive into this question. If I have good credit, why do I care about my credit score? So when we're looking at credit score, 680 to 850, this score range is generally considered having a good credit score. This is a huge range though in, in points on your credit score. And that's what I wanna look at tonight by looking at two families. So we have two families, similar bills. We have the Smiths and the Wilson. Both families pay their bills on time, but there's a big difference in their score. The Smiths and the Wilsons, they both look to buy a $200,000 home. They're both putting $500 or 5% down, but their credit scores do the difference on them. They have a huge difference in their payments. The Smiths have a 760 score. Their payment's 1316 a month. The Wilsons 680 credit score, their payment's 1482 a month. So what I want to ask tonight is, is it worth $166 a month to make sure you not only have good credit, but you have a high credit score? Lower credit score affected the Wilsons in three portions of their payment. It affected them in the rate. In our example, $56 a month, and it was only a half percent difference in the rate. Your credit score can affect your insurance. This is something I want to make sure I truly understand. So, stood, so I reached out to an insurance agent in my area. His comment was, credit score is one of the main driving forces of insurance rates. That was a big eye-opener for me on that one. And then mortgage insurance. Mortgage insurance is default insurance. The benefit to you as, as a person buying a home, you're not putting 20% down when you're buying a home. About every 20 points lower in score is considered the next highest risk when determining your monthly portion you pay. So let's compare. Um, again, like, like I was telling you, both families pay their bills on time and they have the same debt. So what we need to dive into is why do the Wilsons have a score that's 80 points lower? So if we look at their debt, the car loans, they both pay 450 a month. Student loans, they both pay 295 a month. Visas, going to start seeing some differences here. The Smiths pay $25 a month. The Wilsons pay off monthly. Now my first thought is if they pay it off monthly instead of carrying debt, Still don't understand why their credit scores so much points, 80 points lower. So let's dive in a little deeper here. If we break it down again, car loans, always paid on time. Student loans, the Smiths paid on time, always. The Wilsons, here we're going to start getting some difference. They had deferred payments for the first three years, just started paying last month. Now let's look at the visa. The Smiths. $2,000 limit, always keep the balance below $600, pay on time every month. The Wilsons, a little bit smaller visa. Again, I'm thinking that's probably a better risk, right? $1,000 limit, use it for all purchases throughout the month. Here's the big thing. They pay it off when they receive the monthly bill. So still, what we've seen so far, this doesn't make sense. Why do the Wilsons have a lower credit score? So let's look back, go back to the car loan. There's a great account for both the couples, nothing else we can do, just a great account. Student loan, great account, keep paying on time for the Smiths. Now for the Wilson, this is, we're not saying do not defer student loans. We just need to be made aware of this so we make sure that we really take advantage of the other parts of your credit score. Since it was in deferment, they just made their first payment on time. The credit bureau did not report monthly while in defer deferment and the balance increased from the initial start. On the visa, so the Smiths, great account. Keep paying the balance, keep paying on time, keep the balance under $600. Now on the Wilsons, although they pay it perfectly, they pay it off every month, we must watch 
charging close to the limit. That that's where we're getting kind of kind of not the most yield out of our credit score here. So if you've attended my seminars before, you know I'm all about my pie chart. So I always want to focus on the five key parts of a credit score. And this is what I want to continue to dive into in these two families this evening. So on the two biggest parts of your credit score, payment history and amounts owed, this is 65% of your credit score. We're really going to focus on these areas. Other part of your credit score is new credit, the length you've had credit, and the types of credit. So this look at what was different for the Wilsons. The student loan. The Wilsons did not get a benefit of the pay history since their payment was deferred. Payment was deferred. It was just listing there, not reporting a payment every month. And again, that's 35% of your history, the payment history. So on this, again, this is just something we'll be aware. If you have a student loan and it's deferred, we want to make sure that we really hit the other parts of your credits hard. If you have a car loan, this pay it on time every month. If you have a visa, this keep the balance down on the visa. If you have this, that'll help compensate for this. Let's look at the student loan. Since the creditor did not report why the account was in deferment, we're not benefiting on the length of credit history. So it got us again there. Still staying within the student loan, while the student loan was in deferment, the interest continued to add up. The balance on this account is higher than where they started. So that's this amount owed section, and we're going to look at it a little bit more on the visa. So, although the Wilsons pay this account off every month, the creditor may not report this the same every time that every month. So therefore, it could show the balance close to the limit when they do report. So this is something that's really hard to grasp. Um, not all creditors report the first day of the month. They don't all report the 10, 10th of the month. They report when they when their bills generate throughout the month. So you never know when it's going to report. So I'm not saying by any means don't use your visa to pay off uh, or use it for your monthly bills. I do the same thing. But what we have to make sure that we're aware of is if we're using our visa to pay our monthly bills, this makes sure we have a limit high enough so it doesn't get you towards maxing it out. Two really key areas when we're looking at um, amounts owed. If we're maxed out, it could hurt you. It could hurt you like a delinquency. Whereas if you keep it below at least 50% of the limit and a better, better target is 30% of the limit, it can really help you. It can help you so that you get the most yield out of your points on this. So a couple things in conclusion here. Um, what I'm what I'm trying to do is just make people aware. Um, I'm not saying don't defer your student loan. We're not saying don't use your visa for um, your monthly bills. What we're saying is be aware of what affects your score so that we can capitalize in the other areas. So in conclusion here, even though you may have a good credit, good credit, you can still benefit from having a higher credit score. As your credit score goes down, your rate goes up your mortgage insurance portion of your payment goes up and your insurance goes up. About every 20 point change in your credit score can change your rate and your mortgage insurance premium. Now, once you hit 760, it doesn't matter. You're good. 760 is the same as 780. It's the same as 800 when we're looking at rates. So please feel free to reach out to your equity resources loan officer. You can always post also post questions on our website. And again, thank you. I look forward to talking with you next quarter.